Hey everybody, this is video number five of Navajo Wars. And in this video, we're going to continue where we left off last time and execute a couple card plays and show some more of the mechanics of the game. So we're going to draw our next card off the deck. And it is an operations card. Looking over at our APs situation, we have zero APs on the track, so we do not have any opportunity here to uh, preempt the enemy. So the enemy will execute the top line here and receive four action points and conduct their operations. So now remember, they have one cube in the subjugation of the Pueblos box and an historical vent in play. So that's going to give them two bonuses. So they're going to collect a total of six APs. So we'll draw them out. There we go. Next, what they're going to do is, because of the subjugation of Pueblo's card is in effect, they are going to draw from the raid pool. And they are going to continue to draw until they draw enough red cubes to fill this box up. In other words, once there's three red cubes in here, then this event is no longer in, in uh, effect. And the player, the enemy will begin to play the uh, instruction counters normally. So, first cube out is white. That's one, two three, four, five, oh, I thought we were going to get lucky there, and number six, oh, on the very last draw, the third red cube comes through. Okay, well that fulfills a condition in the game known as the subjugation of the Pueblos. When that takes place, a couple things happen. First of all, you're going to recycle the cubes, so all these cubes will be recycled. Next, what's going to happen is all of the black stripe instruction markers permanently flip over to their other side, revealing very nasty raid instructions that will be used against your tribe. So that's a really nasty uh, turn of events early in the game. So that is the end. Luckily, they have no more APs to spend, so um, that is going to fulfill this card, and so we're going to remove it from the game. And now the player has the opportunity to execute an instruction. And one of the instructions that they can execute at this time would be a, a good idea right now would be actually to be a uh, take actions instruction. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do our normal operate operation, which means we can spend movement points to move around the map and uh, start to preemptively cause havoc in New Mexico. So that's what we're going to start off with. And... Each family is given six movement points with which to operate. That can be increased by horsemanship, which is a cultural development, but we don't have that particular one in our bag of tricks right now. So we're going to have six movement points to operate with, and we're going to start with family A, who I placed at the start of the game very close to Santa Fe. And for our first trick, we are going to spend movement points to raid New Mexico. To do so, we spend movement points... Uh, equal to the raid box value of the raid boxes in between the family and Santa Fe, inclusive of Santa Fe. So, since we're adjacent to Santa Fe, we're just going to spend one movement point. If we were here, we would spend one, two movement points. If we were here, it would cost three, four, five movement points, and so forth. As an option, the player can do uh, what we like to call long-range raid, and what that is, is if you're anywhere on the map, you may raid New Mexico one time, spending all of your movement points to do so. So that is an operation available to the player. It's an option, excuse me, available to the player, uh, but we're, we're so close here, we're not going to need to use that. So to conduct a raid, what we do is we open up the raid cup, and we're going to draw a cube out for each raid. So we spent one movement point, that's going to allow us to pull out one cube, and it's a yellow cube. Now, if we look at the chart, which I don't have in Vassal in front of me here, but uh, if we look at the chart, what the chart would say is if you pull a yellow cube when raiding New Mexico, you capture slaves. So what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to place a child counter into the passage of time box. What that does for us is that child will be integrated into our tribe eventually. Whenever we take passage of time, we'll be able to put that child into a family. That child will then eventually, in a future passage of time operation, be able to grow up into an adult, either a man or a woman, as the player decides. So, then we've spent one movement point so far, but I was really wanting to find horses, and I got more movement points to burn, so that's 
going to allow me to spend another movement point. So for our next trick, we'll raid New Mexico again. Again, it costs us one movement point. And this time we pull black cube, which is good. Black cube means we can either collect a sheep or a horse counter from the out of play box. And since horses are my priority right now, I'm going to pick that up. So we got a horse's counter now. And at any time in the game, the acting, the acting player can take his horses, even if it's not his turn, even if it's the enemy operating, and he can put it into a family box. And it will remain in that family box until a passage of time operation is undertaken when all the animals are removed from family boxes so that you can uh, make sure that they're fed. All right, so I've got a horse. I've spent two movement points. Now it's time to get, I think, a little bit of a distance between us and Santa Fe. So we're going to move back a little bit. We're going to move one more. So we spent two. That costs us a third movement point. And by the way, if you have a horse, when you move, it doesn't cost you the raid box value of that raid box. It costs you the parenthesized raid box value. So that's the value of horses. It's giving me a little bit more mobility. Ordinarily, it costs me two movement points to move in that box and then three to move into here. But with horses, it only costs me one on each of those. So I spent uh, three so far, four. I could move up one more and spent five, six, but I don't. I'm just going to stay right here and stop. So that family is done. This family up here, family B, I'm going to spend movement points to plant corn cost to do so is three movement points over and above the raid box value of the raid box the family's in. Well, the raid box value here is three, so spending three more points means I've spent all six movement points to draw one corn counter and place it face down without looking at it into that raid box. And corn counters are going to be able to help me uh, feed my population, as we showed earlier in another video. They also have a defensive benefit because they can distract an enemy column. Uh, the enemy column may go and destroy your cornfields and thus provide the, uh, your family group a chance to escape and get away. So there is some defensive qualities to planting extensive cornfields. We're going to do the same thing up in Canyon de Chez. Uh, we're going to spend three plus one is four movement points to plant corn there. And that is all he can do that I really want to do. You know what? As an option, let's do this instead. Let's move out into Hopi land. That's going to be one movement point to move out, two, three, four, five, and we can plant corn out there. So the reason I do that is now I'm in an area that's gaining a victory point rather than just hiding in the canyon. All right, so I've spent, I've used movement points for all my families. I'm done. So now we do the event. The event is Trappers and Traders. What we do here is we roll a die, select the matching area, which is Area 5, Hopi Land. We roll a die again to select a raid box, and we rolled a 3, so raid box 3 is the selected raid box, and we place an intruder counter into that box. Now, what is an intruder counter? Well, let me show you some of them flip some of these over. It could be firearms from trappers. Um, it could be an enemy ambush. It could be ammunition for firearms. There's all kinds of benefits, but there's a couple harmful things in here. To reveal the intruders, what the player has to do is enter the box with the raid with the, uh, the re intruder counter. So as soon as that family moves into raid box three, that intruder counter will be revealed and its effects implemented. All right, so that pretty much concludes the major event. Next, we have, again, a minor event with a, a enemy posture shift. So we roll a die. Die rolls a four, which matches here. And so, uh-oh, the Ute tribe to the north is now planning operations against the Navajo. So now I've got that to worry about. That's an instruction that's going to be coming up. And so I've got to keep that in the back of my mind. All right, so that kind of upset the apple cart a little bit, but overall this wasn't that painful of a turn. So we'll go ahead and discard that card. And we've got time here. Let's roll through one more. Next card comes up, and this one here, again, we have no AP, so the enemy is going to act. They're going to spend, f they're going to get four APs plus three for every uh, red cube in the subjugation of the Pueblos box. Now, I didn't show you this before, but here's one reason you want to raid New Mexico in addition to stealing uh, goods from New Mexico. 
and that is uh, every cube in this box subtracts from the enemy's AP count. So they're going to get 4 plus 3 minus 2, so that's going to be a net of 5. So let's collect those. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, next we roll two dice, and a 4 and a 1 are rolled. So the 1 matches here, and we flip the counter over, to revealing a different instruction than what we expected. And number four flips over as well. So wow, what about that? The Ute Raid that uh, we were anticipating has now turned into something different. So maybe the, maybe the rumors about the, the Ute tribe in the north were unfounded. Okay, so to fulfill this instruction, we're going to spend three enemy action points. So let's go ahead and just drag them back. One, two, and three leaving two left in the available box. So this will be the only instruction executed this turn. It says expansion and subvert. Well, to expand, you have to have outposts on the map, and since there aren't any, what's going to happen here is instead of expanding and subverting, a uh, outpost is going to be placed instead of expansion. So the Spanish always place a mission in the lowest raid box of an area that does not already contain an outpost of that same type. So next time they're told to build an outpost, it'll be in Area 2, and then Area 3, and so forth. Now, Subversion. Here's what Subversion does. For every AP spent, you roll one die. We spent three APs here, so we roll three dice. And if any of those die rolls match an area containing an outpost, you lose one culture. So rolling three dice, one of them is a one, so we do lose one culture. So we go from ten down to nine. So taking our first serious hit. And what this represents is the aggressive uh, attempts to subvert the culture of the Navajo by the European powers that were in New Mexico at this time. So that is the enemy's half of the operation card. And I'm running out of time on this video, and what I would like to do next is show how a uh, uh, passage of time instruction works. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is cycle the enemy instructions and we'll stop the video here and in our next video we'll show how passage of time works, the benefits of passage of time, some of the things that you can do in it uh, so you can better appreciate what that particular operation is all about.